Now, let's talk about the factors that determine rates of reaction. Reactions occur when molecules effectively collide. An effective collision is a collision that results in a reaction. Now, in order for this to happen, the reactant molecules must be oriented in space correctly to enable the breaking and the forming of bonds and the rearrangement of atoms that's needed to form new molecules. This picture gives an example. In both the top and bottom scenarios, we have the same two species colliding. However, in the top scenario, species A is colliding with species BX in the wrong orientation. A reaction can't happen. It's hitting the wrong side. In the bottom example, a is colliding with BX in the proper orientation and a reaction can happen. This is an effective collision. We can also see this in this FET simulation here. If the molecules hit at just the right angle, a reaction will happen. However, if they hit at the wrong angle, they will just bounce off each other and the collision will not be effective. The concentration of reactants is another factor that's going to help determine the rate. When the concentration of reactants is high, there's more opportunity for particles to collide. The surface area also affects rate. If we grind a substance up into smaller pieces, more of the substance will be exposed and more particles of it are going to be able to react at once. So grinding your reactants up will make the reaction proceed faster. Increasing the temperature will also speed up a reaction. When you increase temperature, it leads to a higher average kinetic energy. So more molecules are going to have enough energy for an effective collision to happen. In other words, there are more particles that have enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier. You may remember activation energy from a previous chemistry course. We're going to be talking about this a lot more in upcoming lessons. The presence of a catalyst can also increase the rate of a reaction. There are two different kinds of catalysts we need to talk about. The first is a homogeneous catalyst. This is a catalyst that's in the same phase as the reactants. Homogeneous catalysts can speed up the reaction by providing an alternative pathway that requires less energy. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later. A heterogeneous catalyst is a catalyst that's in a different phase from the reactant. For example, you may have an aqueous solution with your reactants in it, and the catalyst could be a solid. These catalysts speed up reactions by changing the orientation of the molecules so that the correct sides of the molecules can collide, and this leads to more effective collisions. Now, when we're talking about gases, changing the pressure or volume can change the rate of reaction. If we increase the pressure or decrease the volume, the rate will go up. Think about it. When we increase the pressure, we're squeezing the gas particles into a smaller space. What we're effectively doing is increasing the concentration of the gas. We can show this mathematically by rearranging the ideal gas law. Let's start with PV equals nRT, and we're going to divide both sides by the volume to get P equals N over V RT. Well, N over V is pretty much the same as moles per liter. This is moles per volume. This is the same as concentration. So when we increase the pressure while keeping the temperature constant, the concentration of the gas particles goes up. There are more opportunities for the particles to collide. The reaction rate will increase. In summary, the rate of a reaction is influenced by reactant concentrations, 
temperature, surface area, catalysts, and other environmental factors. Thank you.